Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the power of forgiveness. And our guest is Dr. Uh, Cupid Poe. Uh, Dr. Poe has been with us on a number of occasions and I don't think that he is a, a stranger to uh, members of our audience this morning. And Dr. Poe, let me uh, thank you for being with us this morning and to uh, remind our audience that uh, not only have you been with us on many, many, many occasions, but uh, quite recently we've not been in touch with you and we've been unable to have access to all of the knowledge and the information that you have and the information that you've already given us. But let's start off, Dr. Poe, by uh, reminding our audience of uh, Dr. Cupid Poe. Uh, give us some information in reference to your background, uh, your education, and some of the things that were important in terms of eventually bringing you to us this morning. And then we will get into, by the second segment, we will get into the power of forgiveness. And we all anticipate the information that you're going to give us. Let's start off with, uh, from that direction. Well, let me just say, Dr. Haney, I feel very blessed to have the opportunity to be here and to be on your show again and to share. Um, I came to Nashville in 1956 to attend Tennessee State University. I uh, graduated in 1960 and uh, enrolled at Meharry Medical College and graduated from Meharry in 1964. Did my internship in Chicago. Uh, was drafted into the Army, served uh, for a brief period in Korea. Uh, then I developed sarcoidosis and uh, I ended up doing a residency in uh, Berkeley, California. Uh, I completed that residency in 1970. I uh, made a trip to India looking for enlightenment and uh, I came back to Nashville in 1976 and, and uh, was called to the ministry about that time and uh, served at Meharry Medical College on the, in the faculty of, uh, of the Department of Psychiatry for a while and uh, for the last uh, Oh, about 10 years I've been in private practice in Dixon, Tennessee, and now in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm a minister. I've pastored two churches at, at, at different times, and currently I'm an assistant minister at a church in Laverne, Tennessee, and currently I have a private practice part-time, and I also do some work at the Springfield Jail. Mm -hmm. You know, Dr. Pope, uh, the uh, topic this morning, the power of forgiveness, uh, is a very, very unique topic, and, uh, and, and I'm sure that uh, there's a lot of information associated with it because uh, you've given us so many other kind of mental kind of uh, topics uh, prior to this time. So let's start off by giving you free reign in a real sense to uh, develop this whole idea of the power of forgiveness. Why is it important that uh, individuals or people or groups or whatever should become involved in, because we've got a need for forgiveness, uh, certainly in the world in which we live in today, both nationally and internationally. Let's talk about it from that perspective. Yes, uh, forgiveness is a tremendous human need. Uh, just as love is a tremendous uh, challenge and a tremendous human need. Uh, a lot of problems, Dr. Haney, are related to the fact that uh, people often want to be forgiven, but at the same time, when hurt and offended, uh, when someone close to them is hurt and offended, they refuse to forgive. So unforgiveness is a major contributing factor to, to stress, uh, to illness. Uh, as a matter of fact, the research shows that uh, when people hold grudges or when they think about having been hurt in the past, their blood pressure goes up, their heart rate uh, goes up, their muscle tension in increases. Uh, we also know from, the, from scientific research that uh, uh, unforgiveness uh, impairs the immune system. It helps to reduce your resistance to infection. Whereas forgiveness, people who are forgiving, uh, one, they have uh, better blood pressure, they have uh, better functioning heart, uh, they also have less, less stress, less anxiety, less depression. Uh, so uh, while unforgiveness contributes to problems and unnecessary stress, uh, forgiveness helps to reduce stress and helps to improve health. Uh, so, uh, so forgiveness is a major a challenge and a major need that I think most human beings have. In other words, nobody can go beyond this whole idea of forgiveness or unforgiveness. That it, it, it's something that impacts us all. It's, it impacts us all and because it's so connected with love. Mm -hmm. uh, God came or sent his son to, uh, to suffer and die that we might all receive the forgiveness of our sins. 
And uh, so it's impossible to really love without being willing to forgive. So they are so intimately related and therefore uh, forgiveness is a tremendous need. Let me just also mention that one of the problems... Let us take this first commercial break and then okay. uh, we'll come in at that precise moment when we come back. And we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. Yeah, that's... Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. We're talking to Dr. Cupid Poe, and he's given us some information in reference to the topic, the power of forgiveness. And Dr. Poe, as we promised, we uh, simply want to pick up where we left off the last time and give you an opportunity to continue the discussion in reference to forgiveness. And I think that this is some excellent information that you're giving, and I think it's much needed information that uh, we all need to hear. Let's pick up from that perspective. Right. Let's look at... Uh biblical examples of persons who forgave. Uh, you recall uh, uh, in the Old Testament the story of uh, Joseph, uh, how his brothers sold him into slavery and how Potiphar's wife uh, tried to, uh, well, she accused him of trying to rape her and Potiphar, the husband, believed his wife and had Joseph pl placed into pr prison. But to show you how uh, what high regard uh, God has for forgiveness or uh, for people who are willing to forgive, Joseph forgave his brothers mm -hmm. and uh, God, even before that though, uh, uh, God elevated him to second to the Pharaoh in all of Egypt and used him to save uh, the Egyptians as well as his own family. Mm -hmm. uh, also, you remember the story of Hosea. Uh, God told him to marry a woman who was a prostitute. And even after he married her, she was still unfaithful. She uh, gave birth to two or three children, uh, not by him, but by men outside of the marriage. Uh, of course, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, there's no better example than one who forgave than, than, than the Lord, who, while being crucified, said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. There's evidence also uh, from the writings of Paul that he was a very forgiving spirit. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi, a very forgiving spirit. Um, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, a very uh, forgiving spirit. So God has a high regard for people who are willing to forgive. Now let me also say that in order to be forgiving of others, you've got to be willing to make an effort to forgive yourself. And uh, this is a problem that a lot of people have. Some people uh, will make an effort to forgive others with, uh, at the same time, if you ask them if they're willing to forgive themselves, they will say, oh no, I can't forgive myself for this or for that. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there are many examples of that. People who refuse to forgive themselves because they made bad decisions in the past. People who are no longer abusing alcohol and drugs, but still are angry with themselves because of the hurt that they caused themselves. Unforgiveness. 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 And because of the hurt that they caused others. Uh, sometimes a person who's had an abortion in the past, a woman who has an abortion, will uh, refuse to forgive herself. Uh, so there are many other examples. Uh, a person who has committed adultery may be still angry at themselves even though they've confessed their sin of wrongdoing and God has forgiven them but they have, they refuse to forgive themselves. So unforgiveness, uh, not forgiving oneself is a major problem that contributes to uh, unresolved grief, unresolved shame, unresolved anxiety. Uh, and as a result, that grief and that shame comes out in other indirect ways, overeating, uh, alcohol abuse, drug abuse, okay? So there are many ways uh, that unforgiveness will come out. And so forgiving oneself is a major, uh, a major need. And so what we're really saying is 
the effort to forgive oneself is an effort to accept oneself. Mm -hmm. We're all human. We all make mistakes. God created us uh, with the understanding that we would make mistakes. And so the problem is that too many people are still angry at themselves because of past mistakes mm -hmm. and because of current mistakes. Well, the reality is to be human is to be imperfect. Good. It's to be mm -hmm. imperfect. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to continue to make mistakes. And so I've got to be willing to forgive myself. I need the mindset of forgiving myself because that means I accept my imperfections and therefore I'm more able to forgive others. I'm more able to accept their imperfections. Okay? And so it's very important that we learn to forgive ourselves in order, in, uh, in order that we might uh, be, in order to help us uh, forgive you others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, that's, and that's a powerful testimony, uh, uh, Dr. Poe, in reference to that, that, that we have an individual responsibility that we can really direct our own destiny according to uh, our own mind and according to our ability to forgive. Is that what we're saying? Absolutely. Um, uh, it's difficult to experience the joy of the Lord. It's difficult to experience his peace. It's difficult to feel him moving in your spirit if you are in a rage towards yourself, if you are angry towards yourself. The research shows that uh, unforgiveness uh, contributes to, uh, it's, it's, it's to, to, to not forgiving oneself is, is to be angry at oneself. And to be angry at oneself is to be hostile towards oneself. And we know that hostility has been identified as one of the major factors uh, in the type A personality. Mm -hmm. And we know that people who have the type A personality are much more prone to heart disease and are probably much more prone to disease in general. Mm -hmm. So it's very Im Im important that people practice forgiving themselves and mm -hmm. practice forgiving others. It has significant health benefits. Mm -hmm. And by the way, also let me just share that uh, there's evidence that people who are forgiving have better interpersonal relationships, Good. better marriages. There's also evidence that people who are forgiving uh, report being happier, uh, report being happier. So there's so many benefits, uh, Dr. Haney, from uh, making an effort to be forgiving. As a matter of fact, uh, there's evidence that being forgiving improves the quality of one's sleep. Uh, so you see there's so a lot just, of benefits. It's, uh, it's almost, uh, and it's something that's, uh, that's entirely free. It's a decision that an individual can make and it really doesn't cost in terms of financially uh, anything and et cetera, but it's, it, it's a mindset that if you have, then you can overcome almost any problem in the world that you have. Is that what we're saying? Yes, because it opens you up to God. It opens you up to his spirit. And let me give an example of, uh, of forgiving oneself. Example, um, uh, I've been practicing this for a while now. I forgive myself mm -hmm. uh, for not being a better father. I forgive myself for not being a better husband. I forgive myself for not knowing more as a psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. I forgive myself for not being better informed about the Bible. Mm -hmm. I forgive myself for not being able to pay my bills uh, mm -hmm. on time. Mm -hmm. I forgive myself for at times uh, feeling afraid when I don't want to feel afraid, mm -hmm. feeling angry when I don't want to feel angry. Uh, I forgive myself for being imperfect. I forgive myself for not having more money. Mm -hmm. uh, I forgive myself, uh, Dr. Haiti. All right. And, and, and so that brings about a peace of mind that, that it, in, in a real sense, is passes all understanding. Praise and God. Just, just by the simple idea of forgiveness and that you can forgive yourself. A lot of folks here are saying that really cannot forgive themselves. That's right. I would imagine that's, that, that's one of the real problems that we have in reference to many of the. Uh, traumas that people uh, become involved in and some of some of the disagreements and etc and so dr paul we're going to take this second commercial break okay. and then we're going to get back and we're going to allow you to uh, continue instructing us in reference to the power of forgiveness and we'll be back with our audience following this very very short commercial break
Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Dr. Cupid Poe and the uh, topic is the power of forgiveness. Uh, Dr. Poe, I think that with, uh, within the framework of the information that you've given us, if we were to take these ideas of uh, the power of forgiveness and focus on uh, some of the things that are happening in, in the world today in terms of people, in terms of situations. Uh, and let's look at uh, what is happening on uh, the uh, United States border now with all of the children coming from various parts of uh, South America and Central America, and et cetera. Uh, what kind of uh, forgiveness could you bring in terms of how could you settle that with this idea of forgiveness? Right. Well, you know, the scripture says, judge ye not that ye not be judged. And I think that there are a lot of people who, uh, uh, because of their uh, past mistakes, uh, are angry at themselves and therefore are judging themselves. And when we do that, we tend to judge other people. Um, uh, I believe that God, and according to his word, wants us to be compassionate, wants us to... Uh, uh, to reach out to those who are less fortunate. Uh, and uh, it bothers me when I hear people uh, uh, are so judgmental of other people who are in desperate need. Mm -hmm. I mean, these children who are coming to our country looking for um, uh, uh, freedom, looking for a better life, uh, I think ought to be responded to with compassion. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we ought to be merciful. I mean, we're a big enough country. We have enough... Uh, resources to be able to uh, to offer solace and to offer assistance to these people. Uh, just think about what a difference it would make if, uh, if, if there was a practice of forgiveness. And by the way, uh, I understand that in Ireland now there's, a, there's a, a researcher by the name of Dr. Robert Enright who's, on, who's a psychologist on the staff at the University of Wisconsin. He's uh, doing some work in, in elementary and in one or two elementary schools in mm -hmm. Ireland. You know, there's been this conflict between the Catholics and the mm -hmm. Protestants mm -hmm. there for years and uh, teaching the children uh, the concept of forgiveness. And, uh, and, and it's, it's having a positive effect. And so we need to teach forgiveness mm -hmm. in the public schools uh, in our nation today. Uh, because uh, with my grandson, uh, he, we have Xbox in our house. Mm -hmm. And almost everything in the, that you can buy is violence. Mm -hmm. And so he's constantly watching violence mm -hmm. uh, 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 on the weekend. And after, after, right now, after camp, mm -hmm. you follow me? And so, uh, uh, you know, it's like the gun, the gun situation, mm -hmm. all right? I mean, you know, how much, I mean, how much, I mean, how much more do we have to suffer mm -hmm. because we, uh, before we put some constraints on, on owning, owning guns? Mm -hmm. What would be the situation between the Palestinians and the Israelis mm -hmm. if, if, uh, they, if both sides were willing to be forgiving? What would be the situation in the Ukraine between Russia and the R Ukraine government and the, uh, and the uh, insurrectionists uh, if, there was, uh, 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 if, there, if, if there was a practice of forgiveness on both sides? Uh, what would be the situation in Syria? What would be the situation in, in Afghanistan? I mean, look how much we have suffered because of our refusal mm -hmm. to, to practice forgiveness. And I think it starts with being able to forgive oneself, being able to accept one's own shortcomings, one's own mistakes, mm -hmm. and rather than denying that I've, I've done some wrong, I have been down, okay, and now I see other people are down, and therefore I should have compassion uh, for others as others have had compassion for me. And so, uh, Dr. Haney, if if there was a, 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 a more endorsement, uh, more teaching of forgiveness mm -hmm. in our schools, if, if, if the government gave some, uh, some, some, uh, some encouragement to teaching forgiveness, mm -hmm. uh, it could make a world of difference. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and so Dr. Poe, in, in a real sense, it's the same kind of uh, mental kind of thing that we've talked about all along. Uh, you always uh, bring us the kind of information that we think that we need, and it's an inf information that is in reality worked within the Bible. I mean, it's, 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 a kind, it's a spiritual kind of thing. I think you indicated that you made a trip to India and, and you, uh, uh, you've seen a lot of things in reference to that, uh, developing your own spirituality. And, 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 and you believe that uh, if more people 
we're to think in terms of forgiveness and be open and, and, and allow God to operate in their lives, that we would have a better world. Is that, I mean, that, that's no pie in the sky kind of thing. Uh, that, that's a reality that you believe in. It's, yes. Um, we need more emphasis, not so much on justice. Uh, I was, uh, I was watching a, a, a DVD on uh, the power of forgiveness. And you remember the Amish, uh, mm -hmm. this person who went into school and killed mm -hmm. uh, five girls and injured five girls and the Amish, uh, because in their culture they don't have a concept of revenge, mm -hmm. they forgave the perpetrator. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, also you remember um, Dr. Martin Luther King uh, having been uh, uh, killed by James Earl Ray, and do you remember his son mm -hmm. uh, went and visited James Earl Ray when he was in prison, I think it was in California. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's another researcher by the name of, uh, of um, and I can't think of his name now, but uh, he's an outstanding researcher on the staff at Virginia Commonwealth University, mm -hmm. and he's done a lot of uh, research in the area of forgiveness. And uh, his mother was killed by a young man, mm -hmm. and he sought the young man out and forgave him mm -hmm. uh, uh, in any event. Uh, forgiveness, if practiced, if taught to our children mm -hmm. uh, in schools, if practiced in relationships, okay, where there's mm -hmm. so much domestic violence going on, mm -hmm. uh, suicide rate is so very, very high in our country, mm -hmm. the homicide rate is still too high. Mm -hmm. uh, if people were willing to practice forgiveness, uh, Dr. Haney, this would be a different world. And even on, on the local scene, Dr. Poe, we talk about the international scene and what's happening nationally and et cetera, but even among, <coughs> excuse me, among people that we know individually here, among our local folks, that if we, we could also practice forgiveness among ourselves. Is that what we're saying? Very <coughs> much. Uh, look at the racial divide. You know, we, uh, we hear about the racial divide, the political divide, the, the gridlock in Washington. Mm -hmm. Uh, the conflict uh, between Republicans and Democrats, okay? Uh, all of that could be uh, reduced significantly mm -hmm. if both sides, uh, wherever there's a conflict, were willing to embrace mm -hmm. or practice forgiveness. And again, it starts at home. It starts with me being willing to forgive or to accept myself mm -hmm. as a human being who's imperfect, as a human being who's made bad decisions, as a human being who will continue to make some bad decisions, mm -hmm. uh, no matter how committed I am to the Lord. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make some bad decisions, uh, present and future. Mm -hmm. So with that understanding, uh, that enables me to feel compassionate towards people who are making bad decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, it enables me to be compassionate towards people who are hurting and who need, and who need mm -hmm. my help and who need the help of other people. And finally, Dr. Poe, <coughs> we're all a work in progress. Is that what we're saying? Absolutely. In the last minute and a half in reference to that. <coughs> we are a work in progress. That, yes. that is, we are not complete. But go on, make, yes. the, make some statements. Yes, we, uh, we'll never have it all together, mm -hmm. Dr. Haney. Uh, when they lay me to rest, uh, there will still be some unresolved issues, mm -hmm. some things I didn't achieve, uh, some, some, some conflicts and issues that I didn't resolve. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the reality of being a human being. And uh, I like uh, the human being that God has created me uh, to be. Uh, shortcomings, faults, uh, uh, weaknesses, okay? Uh, at the same time, uh, we've made some good decisions. But, but the way I see my good decisions is to say, I got help from God, I got help from a lot of people. Uh, my faults, uh, I forgive myself for my faults mm -hmm. and the bad decisions. Uh, but I'm proud of, 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 of the good decisions that I've made. And Dr. Poe, let me tell you how delighted <clears throat> we are to uh, have you back with us and to understand that uh, <clears throat> the information that you're giving us is information that can be used uh, by all, which yeah. is to say that as long as folks are, understand that it is really up to them as to whether or not they will forgive. And, and, and then by being able to forgive, then they can bring a lot of other things into their lives. Amen. And I want to thank you for bringing that information. <clears throat> and I want to encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.
Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is But God Ministry. And we're fortunate to have with us to talk about the topic But God, God's Ministry, uh, Pastor Kay Walker. And along with Pastor Kay Walker is Miss Antoinette Duke. And with Miss Antoinette Duke and Pastor Walker uh, is Miss Russell. Uh, and of course, let me welcome you, uh, Ms. Russell, uh, Ms. Yeah. Duke, and Pastor Walker to the show this morning and tell the three of you how delighted we are to uh, have you here dealing with the uh, topic that uh, you wish to uh, talk about this morning. Let's start off, Pastor Walker, by having you to uh, give us some information in reference to your background, your education, and some of your experiences. And then we'll do the same with Ms. Duke and Ms. Russell. You will be able to uh, sort of give us the same kind of information in reference to your background, mm -hmm. and we'll be able to sort of make our audience familiar with the uh, three of you this morning, and then we'll get back during that second segment dealing with But God Ministry, the ministry that the three of you wish to talk about this morning. Let's start off with you, Pastor Walker. All right, Dr. Haney, thank you, first of all, for allowing us the opportunity to uh, come on here. I've been on here many a times, mm -hmm. of course, and I'm Pastor Kelvin L. Walker, mm -hmm. pastor of the Hands of God Christian Church, located in East Nashville, uh, 600 North 2nd Street. Mm -hmm. uh, educated right here in, in the state of Tennessee, the public school systems up until the, all, in, all the time I wanted to be educated, I put it like that. Uh, ended up getting kicked out of public school system. My story is, you know, I went to the Navy, got a GED when I got out. Spent a little time at Tennessee State University, studied some things. Uh, Treveca East Campus Prison Program when I was incarcerated, I went through there as well. Did a little bit of Edmondson Junior College also. But uh, not degreed in anything, but have a measure of knowledge on many things. Mm -hmm. And uh, it brings me to the stage right here to be able to share the stage with these uh, young ladies in the ministry that they're involved in. You know, we'd like to say also that my wife, who's not here, you know, is a member of the board of But God Ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm so excited about it because it's, it's fulfilling to her. Mm -hmm. And it's exciting to me. I, I support her 100 percent in this endeavor mm -hmm. because uh, it, it allows her to see her purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm here today. Uh, with these uh, young ladies. Very good. Ms. Duke, what about you? Your background, some information in reference to your situation. Thank you, and I appreciate the opportunity to be here as well. I'm originally from Huntsville, Alabama, uh, eight girls and five boys, uh, and uh, currently hold a master's degree in organizational leadership and a master's in business administration. Um, that has led me into a field of service, human resources, and that's particularly what um, I find most uh, impactful as far as uh, what I'd like to accomplish in life is just serving. It's a choice, and that's what I choose to do. And Ms. Russell, what about you? Background, education, and some of the, uh, your experiences. Uh, yes, sir, I am a Nashvilleian. Mm -hmm. I'm an East High graduate. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a master's from Tennessee State University, mm -hmm. strategic leadership and planning. I am employed at Metro General Hospital where I'm a senior financial counselor there. Mm -hmm and I cater mainly to the indigent in the community. Mm -hmm. And that is a very humbling and uh, honorable experience as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad to be here today also. Thank very you. Very good, very good. P Pastor Walker, you know that this is a topic that I think that uh, is worthy of our consideration today. Why don't you make some statements in reference to it and then uh, during the second segment, uh, I understand that uh, Ms. Duke is the uh, uh, a creator in a real sense of this organization and then we'll come back during that second segment and allow her to start us off talking about how this org how she created the organization and then Ms. Russell will be able to join us uh, during that second segment. Let's start off. You know uh, Dr. Haney as I as I said earlier that uh, I, I support this ministry 100% uh, as again my wife is in it she's fulfilled in being in it I see the joy that she has as a result of being a part of this because it gives her an opportunity to uh, express service, you know, and they do a lot of things that, that I'm excited about, I'm glad about and happy to see. Because, you know, when you think about first ladies in the churches, you know, they sometimes are in an awkward position. You know, sometimes they're the most loved and respected and then at other times they're the most despised and rejected. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a situation where sometimes they're, they're cursed if they do and they curse if, if they, they don't. don't. You know, mm -hmm. somebody's complaining that the first lady is doing too much and then somebody's complaining that she's not doing enough. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to see them develop a, a ministry that's, that caters to first ladies and give first ladies an outlet to express what mm -hmm. is really inside of their heart to do in terms of ministry mm -hmm. and start and not having to be running around in the church trying to figure out how to do this and how to do that, but at, to, to actually get involved 
in ministry themselves mm -hmm. and make a difference. And, and I believe it's a beautiful thing just to sit back and to behold all of that, Dr. Mm -hmm. Hank. <clears throat> Very good. Of course, we're getting ready for our first commercial break, Ms. Duke. And when we come back, we understand that you are the creator of uh, this organization and we'll allow you during this second segment to give us some information in reference to how this organization came into being and perhaps your motive and uh, your inspiration in a real sense in bringing this organization to us this morning. And we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. The topic is But God Ministry, and we're fortunate to have with us Pastor Kay Walker, uh, Ms. Duke, who is the creator of uh, this uh, program, and uh, Ms. Russell. Uh, let's start off uh, the second segment, Ms. Duke, by uh, having you to give us some information in reference to uh, your inspiration and, uh, in reference to creating such an organization called But God Ministry. Well, I'm really excited about it. Um, and I just have to say that it, it's not about me, but God. Mm -hmm. The ministry was created because of three uh, similar concepts that I think we all kind of encounter. Pain, problems, and people. Mm -hmm. And the end result was, but God. Mm -hmm. And so uh, through a guiding scripture, Psalms 41 and 10, it just talks about, but you, O Lord. Mm -hmm. And I just remember reading that scripture um, and knowing that early on, there was a lot of focus on the pain, the problem. Mm -hmm. And then I saw in that one scripture where it says, but you, O Lord. Mm -hmm. and, and from that was the inspiration that uh, as long as we keep our focus on other things mm -hmm. and not God, it will seem like it's pain, problems, and people. Mm -hmm. But the result should always end with, but, but God. God. <laughs> but, but God. And of course, I would imagine, Ms. Russell, you would buy into that. What are some of your statements in reference to uh, this whole idea of uh, the ministry that you're involved in, uh, Ms. Russell? Well, I, I have to say, um, Antoinette, of course, we're, we're good friends. Mm -hmm. And she came to me, you know, and told me what, you know, God had given, uh, laid on her heart to do. And in, um, you know, telling me what she wanted to do, I wanted to be a part of it because um, in this particular ministry, it really helps define my purpose in life. And that is serving. I have a will to serve. And like Pastor Walker had mentioned earlier, whatever, a lot of times being the first lady in a ministry, uh, in a church, mm -hmm you're um, kind of condemned if you do and condemned if you mm -hmm. don't. But in this particular ministry, um, our motto is, of course, to serve. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it has really been fulfilling for me to do that, going out into the community and serving uh, on various ministries, children, the elderly, mm -hmm. and 
that but God. <laughs> and, 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 and of course, this is, this is the ministry that uh, you wanted to bring to us this morning, primarily because you believe that it has some impact, not only on your church, mm -hmm. but it also has uh, impact upon the members of the church itself. Is that exactly. what we're saying? That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, uh, Dr. Haney, it's, it's important to realize that when you're dealing with first ladies in the church, a lot of, a lot of times, you know, and there's this, this thought process that's out there uh, in the body of Christ that, well, if the husband is called in the ministry, then the wife is automatically called mm -hmm. to be uh, a pastor. So they come up with this created title called co-pastor. I don't mm -hmm. know where they got it from, but, but it, it's there. The scripture it, it, yeah. is that way. <laughs> it, it, it's out there and it's existing. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of times uh, some of the women are, are, are pushed into that spot because of the non-existence of a but God ministry mm -hmm. that now exists. Mm -hmm. So now here you got a ministry that first ladies can tap into and it's open and available to all first ladies mm -hmm. that, you know, that, that have a sincere desire to serve. First of all, you got to have a servant's heart. You know, mm -hmm. it's just not something, it's not a social club. Right. It's not a gathering right. place. It's not something that you do when you don't have anything else to do. Right. It's something that you do because you have a desire to serve God's people. You got mm -hmm. a desire to please God. And there's a measure of integrity that goes into this process as well. So this is what I'm seeing with But God Ministry. That's mm -hmm. why you know, I, I lend my, my 100% support. I even got, you know, my little t-shirt <laughs> on <laughs> because I understand the importance of it and what's happening with it. Now, is this, is this open to uh, first ladies of any church who wishes to become Absolutely. involved in And what are some of your uh, recruitment techniques and your rec recruitment methods and how successful have you been so far? Um, and actually, um, this ministry is designed to provide and equip resources to, um, to help develop, build, and grow. We, we call it a ministry that's twofold. We use senior pastors, wives, and widows to help coordinate events within the uh, community. But we ask for and we welcome committed volunteers, which does not require you to be a senior pastor's wife or a widow. If you believe in service and serving, we want you to be a part of this team. Mm -hmm. And so what we've done, we actually have a conference that's coming up October of this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just open to any denomination that, that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and want to serve. So whether you are a senior pastor's wife or whether you're just committed and want to be a part of the ministry, the opportunity is there. We just use senior pastor's wives to coordinate those activities mm -hmm. in order for us to be available to go out in the community to serve. Mm -hmm. yeah. now, now, Ms. Russell, now, what, what are some of the activities that you're involved in in terms of trying to uh, bring more of the uh, first ladies of the church into various churches into this ministry? Well, actually, some of the... Um programs that we've had already. Uh, we uh, fellowship with the Disciple mm -hmm. Village with the senior citizens. Mm -hmm. uh, we went in and had a dinner, you know, just for them. Uh, we've worked with a ministry that caters to the um, uh, senior uh, single parents, mm -hmm. single parents. Mm -hmm. We've done some, we had a diaper drive and, you know, uh, had some toys and stuff for some of the uh, children and ministries like that. So it has just been a great experience for me. And then another thing too, you know, like it's just brought a camaraderie together from very, very great ladies mm -hmm. that through this, uh, without this, I would not have mm -hmm. had the opportunity, you know, to meet some of these ladies. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, and like she said, we're having our conference mm -hmm. that we're really kicking for in October, so. And, and, and so in, in reality, this, you can spread this all throughout the uh, city of Nashville yes. and farther and et cetera and et cetera. Yes. And, and so you're not limited in terms of uh, denomination Absolutely. or whatever so. <laughs> that all a person has to do is have a desire to serve. Right. And perhaps uh, in this upper echelon, they would have perhaps have to be the spouse of, uh, of, of right. the pastor of mm -hmm. the church, but right. mm -hmm. others are also allowed to become involved in Absolutely. it. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Absolutely. Well, what are some of the uh, recruitment activities that are going on within the church, your church itself? Mm -hmm. Why don't you look, think it, about it from that perspective? Why don't you give us some information in reference to what's going on in your church to bring more people into this organization? Well, and that is probably one of the key things. My husband is uh, Pastor James Glenn Duke, and he mm -hmm. is the pastor of St. Paul Primitive Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. But what we are uh, just trying to make it known is 
it's more so what goes outside the walls of the church. So what we're saying is, it doesn't matter what you want to do in the community, we will tap into that by using senior pastor's wives. One of the things that we have now is a back to school drive. And so we use a lot of social media techniques to say, hey, come, this is what we're doing in the community. We're not sitting, we're serving. And if you'd like to join us, back to school, uh, elderly, um, anything that would allow us to make our presence known in the community, we do that. Very right. good. And of course, mm -hmm. let us take this second commercial break and then we'll be back. Uh, Ms. Russell will pick up with you uh, to uh, elaborate upon some of the things that are going on in your church. Okay. And we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Pastor Walker, uh, Ms. Duke, and uh, Ms. Russell in reference to uh, the uh, program, But God Ministry. And let me, uh, Ms. Uh, Russell, pick up with you uh, during this last segment and to have you to give us some information in reference to some of the things that you'd like to talk about uh, dealing with this ministry and some of the efforts that are being made in your particular church to uh, spread uh, the word in reference to the But God ministry. And uh, Ms. Duke will also continue her discussion in reference to creating this organization. And Pastor Walker will help uh, us close this out for today. Okay. Um, in regards to some of the things that we're doing, first of all, I'm uh, a member of Bethlehem United Primitive Baptist Church where my husband, Dr. Ronnie J. Russell, is the pastor. Mm -hmm. And what we do, you know, it's not necessarily in the church. We use the first.